and welcome to Design Tip of the Week from yesimadesigner.com. My name is Martin Perhiniak, and in this video I'm going to teach you a couple of things that you need to know about working with dashed lines in Photoshop. We are going to use several features to create this pocket that you can see here. The only thing I'm going to use uh, in the beginning is the texture itself, the denim texture, but uh, we are going to create everything else apart from that. So I'm going to use vector shapes, I'm going to use the pen tool, I'm going to also use layer styles, and of course I'm going to also create a custom brush. So let's get started. So there's the denim texture that we are going to start working on. And first of all, I would like to define the shape of the pocket. So for that, I can use several tools, but I'm going to start with shapes. So I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I just draw a rectangle here in the middle. Then I'm going to use the pen tool. So I selected the pen tool and I click somewhere here in the middle. If I want to make sure it's exactly in the center, I can also do that by turning the rulers on. So press Ctrl or Command R, then drag this center point and we just place it somewhere there. And then if I select this object here, I can move it in the center and it's going to snap to the guide. So it immediately knows uh, the center point and it snaps to that. So now I know where the center point is. So I can use the uh, pen tool and I can click here at the bottom. Again, if I want to make sure it's exactly in the center, I just have to be a little bit more accurate. Now I can use the direct selection tool select this point here and hold down shift and press down arrow a couple of times. You can see it's automatically going to be a curve so it creates um, handles as well automatically on this new point but if I don't want that I just have to use the uh, tool here called convert point tool or hold down alt while you are using the uh, pen tool. So with the convert point tool you just click on this and it turns it into a sharp corner. Now I would like to also drag these two points out. So I select this point with the direct selection tool. That's the white arrow tool, which you can also find here in the toolbar. So click on that point on the top and I hold down shift, press right arrow three times. I'm going to do the same with this one here on the left. Shift, left arrow three times. Now I'm going to use the free transform tool, edit, free transform or just simply press command T. Make sure you have a layer selected of course. Edit, free transform path. And I'm going to just drag this up a bit just so we have the shape right. Okay, now I can drag this ruler out using the selection tool. I can just drag it out and leave it there. Although it might be useful to still keep it here just in case we need the center line. Okay, now the next step would be to use the texture on this as well, on this shape, but uh, use it a little bit uh, scaled or just make it a little bit different to the one in the background. Because obviously on the pocket we should have the same texture, but we have to make sure it's visible that it's um, not in the same level. So it's a separate fabric sewn into the other material. So what I'm going to do is to select the background layer and then press Ctrl or Command J to duplicate it. This one we can drag over the rectangle or that shape that we created and then holding down Alt I'm going to click between these two layers to create a clipping mask. So now the clipping mask is created I can use the move tool and move this texture around. You can see already that it moves inside that shape but we can also make this a little bit smaller just so the texture looks a bit different something like that but at the moment it's still very difficult to tell that it's a different shape here what we need to do is to select the rectangle or that shape layer double click on it and choose drop shadow that's a good one to start with and I'm just going to click and drag over the image here just to move the drop shadow a little bit further and then I'm going to increase the size and also the spread. So we already have a little bit more standout feature here with these uh, added effects. Then we can also add bevel and emboss, but maybe I'm just going to change the angle. So let's imagine the light coming is coming from the top, so I'm just going to set the angle uh, to the top. 
something like that and the highlight can be reduced and uh, maybe I can just increase the depth a bit more on the edges yeah something like that I think that will work for us okay you can see if we increase the size well that's not needed in this case I think the size can be very uh, small something like that you can check if you want to soften it out maybe softening is quite good that makes it a bit more uh, believable okay now we can click on OK and uh, that's enough for the effects and now it's time to add the stitches and for the stitches we are going to use uh, the um, dash line options in Photoshop but I show you two different techniques I am going to duplicate the original rectangle layer or that shape layer uh, which we can call pocket just so we know in the future and I can call this texture so I select the pocket layer, hold down Alt and click and drag to create a duplicate. Then I use the selection tool, the black arrow tool, click on this and remove the white fill and add a yellow stroke. I can reduce the width of the stroke maybe to one point or actually let's make it two point like that. And then using the free transform tool, control or command T, I'm going to reduce the size of this shape. If you want to make sure it's scaled down while keeping the center of this shape and the original one at the same position, make sure you hold down Alt and Shift together. So Alt and Shift together, you can resize while keeping the original center point uh, in the same position. So I'm going to set up the size of this shape to something like this. And uh, maybe I'm just going to reduce the scaling down to 1.5. So I just type that in. Um, now the drop shadow is obviously too strong so we will have to get rid of that or make it less intense so I'm going to double click on that reduce the size and maybe also the spread yep that's better and I think at this point we don't need bevel and emboss instead we just use a texture that texture can be changed the scaling on it and maybe the depth as well something like this I think will work quite well Then I click on OK so we updated our effects on this and this is going to be the stitches and then I'm going to change the style and that's the important part on the stroke options we change to dash stroke so that looks already quite good but if we want we can always add uh, changes to this or go into more options and then type exactly how we want the dashes and the gaps to work at this stage I think this will be good so I'm quite happy with this so if I zoom back a bit that's how it looks so far maybe the drop shadow is still a little bit too strong um, so I'm going to double click on that and just reduce the opacity of that effect it doesn't have to be so uh, strong at, the, at this stage but we can always play around with that feature I think that that looks quite realistic now I would like to have a second row of stitches so I'm going to just duplicate this whole layer by pressing command J free transform tool and then reduce it down again in size so there we have two um, lines now two dash lines going around the pocket and the next step would be to add a, uh, another stitch here in the middle I would like to create a nice shape like a decoration and for that instead of using the pen tool although I would be able to use that as well I'm going to use a custom brush just so you can see that you can even create dash line with custom brushes so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this decoration like that and I can call this stitches 2 so on the decoration layer I select my brush tool and I'm going to create a custom brush so I'm going to first of all draw a stitch and I would like to make it the same size as these so I just select it like that and then I on this new layer I fill that part in with black so I go to edit fill and choose black click on OK so we have uh, that black detail selected already and I'm just going to go to edit and choose define brush preset and I can call this uh, stitch or something like that and then uh, I'm going to click on OK so now that it's saved I can actually delete this from this layer and uh, I am going to go to the brush 
panel, select the brush tool, and uh, in the brush tip shape, I have already that selected, that new custom brush. But what I need to do is to increase under the brush tip shape controls, increase the spacing until it becomes individual strokes. Otherwise, it's going to be just a line. But if I increase this up to a higher level, then these uh, dashes are going to be separated. So we need to find the best uh, gap between them. I think that looks quite good. Maybe just a bit more, around 680, let's see. Yeah, that looks quite good. Um, and then the next step I need to do is to go into Shape Dynamics and change the angle to Direction. And that's a very useful option because that means now if I draw it's going to follow the angle in which I'm going to change uh, or move my mouse around. Of course this works with a tablet as well so if you use a, a Wacom tablet it will be even more uh, fluid drawing than with a mouse but that's exactly what I wanted so now all I need to do is also to copy the effects uh, from the previous layers where we created the stitches. So I hold down Alt and drag the effects icon onto this new layer. So now if I draw with it, it already has the effect on it. And I will also select the color I used on those. Uh, just quickly sample a color, maybe make it a bit brighter, something like that. And now we can see how it works. I think I will make it even brighter just to compensate for the size. That looks good. Let's see. Yep, that will work. Maybe a little bit darker than this color. So now I can just draw uh, on this. And I can draw any uh, pattern or decoration here, really. So I can feel free with the mouse tool to draw what I, I like uh, as, as the stitches. And if it's not completely symmetrical, that's not a problem because that will make it a bit more realistic. So I can draw another line here, maybe create a shape, let's say a shape like that. Or we can also create another line and uh, just create like a knot over it and then go to the other side. So really after this point, it's up to you how you want to uh, create these shapes. And uh, let's have a look at this without having the guide over it. So I just go to view, clear guides, so we can see uh, the design that we created and maybe as just a couple of additional steps we can have a label on the side so for that again I'm going to use a shape tool um, the rectangle tool draw the label and I'm just going to change the color of this to maybe a darker red for example and I'm just going to move it a bit closer and I make sure also that this goes behind uh, the pocket. So I drag it all the way there. So we will have the already the shadow affecting it. And I can use free transform to rotate just ever so slightly like that. Maybe a little bit too much there. Yeah, so there we have a label. Again, this can have a texture on it. So I select the effects, choose texture, and that might be a little bit too big. So I just reduce the texture something like that and then we could even add a label there I mean a text over it just going to call this uh, denim just go to the text facts and reset my uh, character reset character now we can type in denim and uh, oh, just let's call it jeans I'm going to fill it in with white by using the background color I just press command backspace or control backspace I can change the font on this and we can select any of these fonts here maybe let's use something a bit stronger character like Myriad Pro Bold that will work so I can then turn it around either way make it a bit smaller with the free transform tool and place it over it. And then maybe as a last touch, we can add um, a button as well here. So I'm going to create that with another shape tool using the ellipse tool. I go all the way to the top and draw a circle here holding down shift. I can make sure it's a perfect circle. This can use the same color what we used before on the stitches. So I'm just going to select that color there 
and then I'm going to also copy and paste the effects on this maybe the only thing here I, we don't need the texture instead I just need the bevel and then boss and uh, it shouldn't be softened out so it should be without the soft option on the size can be increased a bit and then uh, we can maybe just play around with this and have this chisel hard or chisel soft I guess chisel soft is quite good I'm just going to increase the size something like that so that can be the button and just to make it more interesting I'm going to also uh, duplicate this layer zoom a bit closer and make a smaller version as well inside something like that and the color of that one in the middle can be a bit darker than the one outside or maybe let's have a look if it's brighter yeah I think it looked better when it was a bit darker like that or maybe we can have the one at the bottom darker that's the good thing about working in Photoshop it's so easy to make these changes at any point so there's the button I can group these layers together and call it button so that will be my button and I can duplicate that whole group onto the right side as well so we have two of them I just position it there and then I can combine a couple of additional elements here as well like the stitches and the decoration that can all be in a group called stitches and then we can call this label at the bottom and that's the pocket itself I'm just going to call it pocket and uh, to be honest we can just call this the base and then I can group all of these together so there's button one and button two uh, we can group everything together as the pocket select everything call it pocket and then we can easily move it around over the original denim background okay so that's how I created this effect and mainly from this lesson what uh, I wanted you to learn is how to work with dash lines so you can see you either use a custom brush to create uh, that effect or you use shapes and make sure for those shapes that you don't use uh, fill color you only use a stroke on them and then here on the top you can customize how it looks the width and the style as well and then you can have other options as well here if you click on more options you can really customize your uh, dash lines so that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial I hope you found this useful and make sure you join me next time as well here on yesimadesigner.com Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. Also, if you want to learn more about design, check out my in-depth online courses on my website yesimadesigner.com